This podcast is brought to you by GA Sports. GA Sports is home of the O'Connor Slitter, Ireland's number one hurling ball used by 311 clubs nationwide. Hello and welcome to the Backdoor Football Show. Delighted to be joined by Finian Handley and Johnny McGee. Um, firstly, lads, it's going to be very different now playing um, football behind closed doors. Um, we'll come to you first, Finian. I suppose it's causing drama because you can have 200 in an outdoor cinema, but you can't have 200 at a match. But um, it's, it's going to be different now, totally. Just two teams and that's all that's going to be there. Yeah, it's 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 a funny one. It's uh, it will be different. Um, even though in playing the last number of weeks, it hasn't been. Uh, it's it's you know the matches have been the, the, the you know playing in Pier Stadium particularly. You know yet it hasn't been like there's been crowds there at all really. You know because the stadium eats up any you know out of two hundred people, the stadium eats it up. So um, it, it won't be materially different to the last couple of weeks. But um, yeah, look, we we had incidents in in Galway where young lads jumping the fence and all that sort of stuff probably happened in Dublin as well but everyone is trying to get in it's it, it's a funny one you know the government are trying to trying to get this right everyone's given out about it um, you know you can take the point that coming to the match and leaving the match is probably what they're trying to stop and, and people gathering you know before matches and after I think inside the stadium as we all know it's very easy to manage this um, you know you could put 5,000 in and with everyone socially distant, distancing, you know. So, um, no, look, it'll be funny. It'll be like challenge games. But I was sure, uh, you know, the day before yesterday that there was no football going to be going ahead. I, I heard 15 at an outdoor gathering and uh, were we able to train on Tuesday night? No one knew what was going on because the messages were so mixed. So the fact that it's still going ahead, uh, which I only kind of realised in the last couple of days, uh, my body isn't happy about it, but uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm thrilled that it's it's actually carrying on, and there's even talk about intercounty games going ahead in in the winter as well. So, you know, I know it's disappointing with no crowds, but it's definitely it's definitely a plus that it's still going ahead. And Johnny, um, Rahini obviously last week in Dublin with a COVID case, and now it's rumored that there's been a case in Ballyboden, but Ballyboden have said that they won't be going in to shut down, that that player will be quarantined. I suppose that's a big risk for them to take as a club. Um, yeah, well, look, I suppose they would have, the Ballyboden would have, would have made sure that uh, of all the, the pitfalls of COVID-19 to make sure that they, you weren't leaving yourself exposed. So, I'd say like the Dublin GA came out with guidelines in relation to after the Rohini incident that clubs don't have to shut down once that that player was isolated and that went to the went to the government guidelines of, of or the HSC guidelines of self isolating and obviously go down the route of um, testing and stuff. So you know, as I said an adult player, but didn't say specifically the singer uh, Barry Bowden team. So look, I think it's I think look I think we have to be practical as well. That look, we're going to be living with this disease or this uh, virus until there's a vaccine. And I think you know, um, you know, I suppose we have to be sensible um, and not overreact to, to stuff. You know, so I think that's where you know where I don't think that's why Barry Bowden haven't shut down everything. I think they're just gonna. Going off the advice of what Dublin County Board came out with after the Rohini, where the clubs don't have to shut down everything. Um, you know, I think it's it's important from that point of view where like there's a lot of panic in Seoul. Like you know, last week there's a couple of soccer clubs um, where there was a, a person came in close contact of a COVID nineteen case and they shut down the all activities over the weekend uh, of of the soccer club and and uh, you know then it came back that they, it was a negative. Uh, test so you know it's I suppose you have to kind of you know uh, like assess this every diff- different situation and I think uh, I think that's why you're probably about and haven't come down come out and, and shut down everything you know I think you know I think you've done the right thing and you know obviously deal with this it, with the, the one case and then go from there you know and think each case as it comes and obviously the contact tracing and close contact and all that kind of stuff comes in the form there but um, I think yeah, yeah look I think it's you need to be kind of realistic about things and not uh, that sense of panic you know and loads of people going and getting tested and stuff so yeah Johnny we'll just come to, to you again and um, your daughter Laura McGee one of the latest 
Gaelic footballers um, from the women to sign with an AFL club. It's actually remarkable the amount of women overplaying AFL now. I think it's something like 20 plus. Yeah, no, I think it's, well, at the moment it's 16. I think there's due to, uh, due, uh, a few more over there. But um, yeah, look, it's it's fantastic in my opinion. Um, the ladies over the last couple of years have gone out and uh, they've done a good job, you know. And uh, look, and Lauren is joining the two girls, Neve McAvoy and Sinead and Goldie, um, which is nice to have that they're all on the same team and uh, playing for Melbourne and the. Uh, you know, I suppose the the connection with Melbourne and with Jim Steins as well um, is nice as well. So um, look, it's I think it's the I think it's brilliant for the girls. Um, you know, it's to go and play professional sport um, and uh, to be an elite athlete. You know, it's it's a uh, certainly certainly hard to turn away, turn your turn turn down. You know, when you have the prospect of going to 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 Australia and playing a professional code and you know, look, I'm a GPO, um, so I'm, I'm, I encourage all kids to go and uh, try all sports because, you know, I think there's a learning in every sport. Um, uh, if you use it right in, in, and I come back to GA, like in terms of soccer and rugby and, you know, uh, the G, or rugby is more tactical than soccer, you know, more spa- play with your head up and spatial awareness and stuff. So, you know, I think it's 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 great that uh, that the girls are doing so, so well over there, you know, and look, um. Look, well, looking forward to her on the journey. We're not looking forward to when she actually flies out, but sure. she's only gone for a few, five months or something like that. So. And uh, Finian, just coming back about the incident in Killaloe in Longford um, last year, uh, well, the stage last year, um, they played an under-16 final. The opposing team got the red card rescinded. They didn't pay a 750 euro fine. And now they're expected to be thrown out from under-16 to senior grade out of the championship altogether. Um, they've made an appeal. The appeal decision is going to be made tonight. If it gets accepted, they're due to play a championship game on Sunday. Um, it's a mad situation, really. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a standard GAA situation, uh, really. From you know, when you look over the years, there's always a couple of these crazy situations. You have lads in CCCC meetings at four in the morning and all sorts of stuff. It's real bandit stuff. Uh, so I'm not surprised, to be honest. Um, um, I suppose it goes back to GA and, and and you know, it has become so professional over the last couple of years in club and in county. But, you know, it's hard to account for everything when you're not actually a professional organization and you know like things like that can happen where i suppose you know the clarity at the start you know it's it's there and it's there in black and white and i'm a big believer of fact uh, it's there in black and white this is what happens if you do this or whatever and then you don't pay your fine this is what happens and um, you know like most professional organizations have that and they have a black book that states you look at it and that's it so you know, if it's there and it's 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 been transparent and they have um, broken the rules and they're very aware and they're aware of it and then they've um, they've gone back and looked at it and they didn't pay the fine that they were supposed to pay and they've broken those rules, then you know there's not a lot uh, they can appeal really. But again, I I would be and now I don't know overly know a whole lot about it. I read the I read the report, but uh, I would be of the opinion that there's not it hasn't been that clear. Uh, you see it all the time. We've seen it in Galway here. We had a championship roll on for a year, a year because one team was appealing, and uh, the championship, you know, just kept rolling over, and and all sorts of shenanigans went on because it wasn't written down, or it was a a, a rule that wasn't, um, um, you know, placed on the championship at the time. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that one plays out. Uh, will they be playing on Sunday? Um, I'm sure they're training away with the opinion that they will be, or they'll cause a fuss themselves, kill a load. But uh, no, it's, it's 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 interesting. It's something to look at in the future because we need to stop a lot of this nonsense. Because everyone is, you know, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, you know parochialism in in GAA where you can ring the local fella and you know the other lad or the other lad's your cousin, and you can uh, you know you can jump over a few hoops or whatever. So. Uh, and you're going to have that, so I suppose they just need to try and get out the grey areas and, and, and deal in more fact, I think. But it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And Johnny, um, obviously Turlock O'Brien had stepped down as Carlo senior football manager. Niall Carew has now come in, but probably a real positive for Carlo to get Jerry Brennan in as coach. Yeah, look, um, Jerry is an um, intelligent guy. Um, he was involved with Bray. 
this year in the cha- uh, in the club with club championship. Um, uh, look, got unlucky in terms of uh, were knocked out um, in the last game and it didn't make the knockout stages. But he they bet did a big scalp and early in the in the matches where they bet right new um, and surprise was a big surprise or shock at it. You know, of the round, and look, I suppose, like, look, Jerry's an intelligent guy, you know, has won a couple of all earnings, um, has been involved with uh, Vincent's and club all earnings success. Um, you know, I've seen him come on the last day for 10 minutes as well from Vincent. So, um, look, Jerry's uh, is an intelligent footballer, and look, he, he has a he's involved with UCD as well, you know, um. And would definitely bring would would bring a huge amount of experience to that role as a coach. Um, uh, with Noel Carew, who's an experienced manager, who's who's managed a couple of different counties as well. So, look, it's a good package. Um, you know, it, the thing is now is like you know they're back down in Division Four. You know, they've a quick turnaround now. Like you know, I suppose the you know after the club championship, like they, at least they get a chance to well. Well, you thought you could have a chance to have a look at lads playing in club championship, but obviously not now. So, but look, they'll obviously get the, the DVDs or whatever to watch the lads, and you know they they they'll um, be able to look at it that way. So, well, that's a plus for them. But um, you know, it's they have a short window to try and get in how they want to play their football and their identity, and you know, uh, and they're coming in after you know Torlock, who's done a fantastic job there. You know, I think he was there for five years, six years. Um, and done a great job um, in relation to getting them up out of Division Four, you know, and taking a few scalps in the championship, you know, and and uh, it just goes to show, you know, that you know if you have fellas all on the same hymn sheet and all wanting the same goal, and they're all rowing the same direction, you know, it is achievable in relation to what they did. And it was, you know, people say oh, I was a surprise. No, like for me, if you have. 30 lads that are willing to 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 do everything that the coach and manager are gonna are implement. You know, it's there it's a very difficult team to beat than a one that's maybe half half arsed going into it. You know what I mean? So yeah, look, um, big job ahead of the lads, but I'm sure the look the experience the two lads will bring to that job, they they they're more than capable of of um doing a good job but look the, the patience is required because you know it's there's a few players uh, at the end of their coming towards the end of their football and career or county career so look it's going to be um they have to be look so look it might not be the the easiest arise but look i think uh, you know yourself it's a two-year i see it's a two-year contract for me look those two-year contracts are not worth it like if you want to do if you want to do it properly it needs to be done for three to five years if you want to do a proper job um you know, in really, in my opinion, but sure, look, um, see, I'd say look the best look to many. Anyway. Yeah, moving on to the Mayo Club Championship um, this weekend, um, it looks like six teams have secured their places uh, in the quarterfinals, um, with Ballon and Knockmore definitely have, and then unless there's any major hammerings, so Ballon Tubber, Ahamore, Ballon Drain, and Daniel, but. An absolute cracker this weekend, um, Finian, to decide who's really going to go through between Castlebar and Westport. And like, it's amazing because you'd be looking at Castlebar at the start, predicted them to win it, but they're coming up against an impressive Westport team who have actually put Kevin Gein, who's known as a fullback, full forward this year. Yeah, uh, uh, an interesting change for a fullback to, to be playing full forward. Uh, I know I'll never see the day, but. Uh, um, yeah, no, it's a huge game, huge game. Um, as I said a couple of weeks ago, I tipped Castlebar uh, to go on and win it. But uh, you know, if, if, like you wouldn't be surprised if Westport, you know, pull, pulled one over on them on on on, on Sunday. As Braithy beating Castlebar was a little bit of a shock, you know. Uh, Braithy obviously can always pull off a big result, and they're one of the kind of contenders we'll call them. But uh, uh, to beat Castlebar in Castlebar was a huge result for them. So pretty true as far as in that group, but no, look, Westport, you know, a team that's been coming over the last couple of years after James Warren kind of put in the ground groundwork, and uh, they're you know they're on a steady um, climb. So so you know you know it's a huge game. I think I think I still think Castle Bar will get the job done, and they'll improve going into the quarterfinals, semifinals, and they'll be there and thereabouts at the end. But you know whether whether you know you just don't know what can happen, referees and all that. So in a one-off game, you'd give you'd give Westport. 
a slight chance, but I, I still think Castle Bar with you know the way the Durkins are, you know, they're 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 going well and um, you know, the three of them and they've they've plenty in the in the tank to to to, to move on and they'll see Bravey as a slip and, and and nothing more. I know Alan Flynn will be very, very uh he'll be disgusted with the result, but he'll be you know, he'll have a couple of things up his sleeve for, for this weekend, definitely. Yeah, and Johnny, just looking at the Donegal Championship, um, St. Ewan's, Kilcaird, Glenties and Guido seem to be that uh, step ahead of everyone else. But like Kilcaird bet uh, Glen Swilly there by 20 points at the weekend. Uh, Glen Swilly team that contains uh, Michael Murphy, but the Kilcaird spine is just massively impressive with the McHughes and the McBrady's. Yeah, look, I suppose Kilcard, um with the quality that I have, you'd expect them to come through that one. Like, you know, I suppose it's very similar to for Michael Murphy. You know, everyone relies on him with the Nigal and more, even more so your own club. So um, it's very, like, you know, for one man, you you can, well, nullify enough uh, two lads and one man like, like Michael Murphy. But, like, when you have got three or four quality players, you know, it's very hard to try and stop a team, you know, because, you know, the t- Top club teams will probably have two two out and out man markers. Very very surprised. Very lucky team to have three. So you know then you you know you're rubbing Peter to pay Paul. So you're looking for lads that kind of you know step out of the ordinary a small bit and and do a job for the team. But look, um, yeah, when you've got three or four quality players, it's very hard to try and to curtail that 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 danger. You know. Yeah, and then just looking at um, Guido Orfinian, like it's it's massive for them um, having Kevin Cassidy and Oren McNeilish won't weren't with Donegal obviously anymore, and just to have them focusing on the club is massive. And then when you look at St. Ewan's, like Rory Cavanagh, former Donegal footballer, not even starting. Yeah, no, that will kind of tell you where 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 both teams have come, and I think with Guido there. You know, with the McGee's, you know, Cassidy, obviously, he's 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 obsessed. He loves his football. So, you know, he's been driving that club for the last number of years. You know, he, he owns the local pub. He's really the man, the, the Guido club man that drives it on. And, you know, a couple of years back when they lost to Carfin, they weren't they weren't far away at all. You know, and obviously Pip last year. Uh, to get to come out, so you know they're 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 kind of a team that'll be a mainstay in Donegal over the next while, I believe. From what I'm hearing, they're they're putting in good work at underage as well. So, um, but they're they're you know they're they're the team I think this year that will win it. I know they're joint favourites with with Kilcar, but I still think they just have a bit more know-how than than Kilcar. Kilcar kind of flattered to deceive in the last while, or you know over a number of years, like they've always had, you know, McHughes and McBrearties and stuff. But I just think. Guido, name of Donegal, and uh, they 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 rally the troops when it comes to championship, and they're well able to 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 you know they're tough, very very tough. So I think the likes of Kilcar don't 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 really like that physical physicality that the likes of Guido bring. So um, they're 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 my favourites to, to to win it this year. Yeah, moving on to the um, Kerry Championship, Johnny. You probably couldn't pick a better game to start the championship tonight than Austin Stacks versus Dr. Croaks, the Killeney Tralee rivalry. Um, Kieran Donnelly obviously is still going to be very central for the Stacks at full forward. Rowan Shanahan at wing back, and I believe Brendan O'Sullivan has transferred to Austin Stacks now. But I suppose it, it has been tough, I suppose, for Croaks to deal without the Gooch, but with Owen Brosnan involved in the background this year and Tony Brosnan just seems to light up the championship every year for Dr. Crokes. Yeah, look, I suppose, yeah, it's uh, Dr. Crokes or, or that kind of, at this moment of time, or, you know, that consistency and the performance over the last probably five, six years, you know, has been, has been, has been excellent. Um, they're probably, probably disappointed that they probably haven't won more. Um, but then, you you know, you throw in where come up against the likes of Carl Finn, you know, um, who've but who've been the dominant force, to, uh, obviously in club football. But look, I suppose with the crow quality of Crokes have all around the field, I think just that uh, stacks rely on too much on one or two, kind of one or two others. And yeah, like you know, for me, I just think that Dr. Uh, Crokes with quality through each throughout each line, even like they've got a great conveyor belt of a talent coming through, and um. You know, and you all seem to play that lovely brand of football, um, fat, like you know, heads of football, kick and slide of football. So look, um, it's very hard uh, for me anyway to see past uh, or or Dr. Crokes win. You know. 
Yeah, and uh, just even looking at the county champions last year, East Kerry, Finian, they're now boosted by Rathmore, who went down to intermediate. So they're going to get Shane Ryan, Paul Murphy, and Aidan O'Mahony. Plus, they already have Jack Sherwood, Liam Kearney, Paulie Clifford, and David Clifford. That's seven players you could just work with on your team alone. Uh, the footballers that they have last year are all sublime. The divisional side really in Kerry are at such an advantage because they're picking off six or seven clubs now this year. Ah, yeah, they have. They, they, they do. And I suppose over the years, I was wondering why they didn't win more championships or, or weren't more competitive. You know, Dr. Crokes and Killarney were obviously, you know, the team, there are, are the team to be. But I think East Kerry now have just moved ahead, as, you, as you've named. I, Aidan O'Mahony, I don't know, is he playing uh, or, or, or what sort of time he's, I know he's doing triathlons and stuff at the minute, but uh, uh, obviously a team with the Cliffords. Uh, in it, you know, straight away you have to look up. I suppose it's kind of like when the Mehans were in, in Galway uh, with Caltra. You know, it didn't really matter. Everyone took took notice. But uh, no, they're 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 favourites for a reason. Um, Doctor Crokes, as Johnny said, uh, obviously conveyor belts. You know, of, of players coming, they might be between two stools at the minute. Where, um, where where their their great team is just gone, and and their next great team is coming. So, uh, it might be a gap of a year or two there. Um, or Tony Brosnan, he trains with us sometimes in Salt Hill. Is he's going out with um, the manager's daughter, but uh, he's a different level of footballer. Uh, different level of class, really, really clever. Um, so he's he's going to be a main man for them over the next while. But uh, I do think these Kerry are the team, definitely the team to beat this year. Uh, when you talk of the names that they've after, they're after adding to, to 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 what they have already, which is impressive. Uh, and outside of that, I don't uh, I don't see anyone else um, 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 touching either East Kerry or Doctor Brooks. Yeah, another interesting game this weekend, the Kerry Championship, uh, Dingle versus Tempano. Dingle obviously have uh, all the gainies, uh, Connor, Paul, Dylan, Michael, plus Matthew Flaherty and Thomas Sullivan. Coming up against Temple Noah, who are just up from intermediate, Gavin Crowley, um, Killian and Adrian Spillane and Ty Morley. A lot of inter-county players on show and it, it, it'll probably be a very tight game as well, Johnny. Yeah, look, I suppose the, the one thing is you have to come up from intermediate, there's a lot of pressure, you know, um, on those on those lads playing um in championship or senior championship after coming up from intermediate, you know, you would have seen the last day or so a couple of weeks ago where Car Finn were playing I can't think of the name, but um the right. Yeah, gave him an awful trimming. So like you know, it, it's that kind of balance where you know when when it, when all the effort of getting up into senior um, takes a lot out of out of our club team, and then then you have to raise your game then. And whereas the mistakes you might get away with intermediate level, you're definitely not going to get away with that when you when you when you're playing against a team who are playing senior football. You know, and when you've got intercounty lads, look, I suppose on sprinkle on both teams. But the problem, the thing is, the lads with the sprinkle of county players on the senior side. Those lads were playing senior football for for the last few years, whereas these lads, the other lads, you know, um, haven't been. And look, but then again, look, it's all it's all down to your hunger and desire as well. Like you, so you, you just don't know. I suppose with, with the sprinkle of county players on both teams, but for me, you know, it's hard to look past England really. To be honest with you. Yeah, another interesting game live in RT Finian uh, on Sunday is Clarny Legion versus Kern Rallies. Another sprinkle of inter county players going to be playing here. Clarny Legion, Brian Kelly, Jonathan Lyon, James O'Donoghue, and then you have Connor Gain, who's been in and out with the county. Then uh, Kern Rallies, Jack Savage, David Moore, and Tommy Walsh, Gavin O'Brien, and Cornell Coffey. So there's going to be a lot of inter county players there, but that's, that, that's also going to go down to the wire, you'd have to think. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a that's that's a funny one, you know. Killarney Legion, you know, obviously James O'Donoghue who is their their talisman, um, and they've had players coming on the county scene over the last while, um, and they've been kind of a common team, um, obviously in the shadow of Doctor Crokes, but um, it's it, it, obviously it's tough to to come out of the main, when the main club is so dominant, um, you know. But but they're definitely a common side. But Kearns or Rallies is a funny one. They kind of remind me of Moy. Uh, in Tyrone, with with they've had so many county players over the years, you know, between like when 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 Tommy Walsh and his brothers were playing, when 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 David Moore and you know Jack Sherwood and these guys, they've had loads of county players over the year, but they've never Barry John Keane, and uh, they just haven't. Uh, I was shocked, you know. Every year you kind of look at them as contenders, and they fall away. 
uh, quite quite easily. Um, so I don't know, is it is it the town thing or whatever? You know, we suffer from ourselves in, in Salt Hill uh, where, where interest might fall away and there might be other things going on in Tralee. But uh, uh, it's a funny one. It's a funny one, but they definitely, they're well equipped. Uh, you know, six or seven players like you've named there uh, in any team, you think, Jesus, uh, they surely could fill in the other eight with, with workhorses or, or utility men or whatever it is. Um, but, but but they haven't seemed to be able to do that and get over the line. So um, that'll be an interesting game. Uh, as you said, you've got 10 or 11 that the, that, that, that the county manager will be looking at there. But, uh, um, you know, that doesn't always guarantee you great games. And if lads, you know, James who is he fit? You know, how, how are the injuries and stuff? But uh, if you've got all those lads flying it, um, you should be in for a great game. But, you know, if I was to pick a team to win, I'd go with Kearns or Rallies. I'd, uh, and I'd probably jinx them because I've gone with them in, in, in every game they've played for the last five or six years. And uh, uh, they lose a lot of those and they haven't won a championship. So, um, but, but yeah, I think Kearns or Rallies uh, should be with the break and with all those players back training with them should be too, too strong. Yeah, um, Johnny, bit of an upset, I suppose, in the Dublin Championship last weekend. Thomas Davis, county finalist last year failing to get out of the group but some very tasty ties in the quarterfinal already um obviously your own club chemical croaks coming up against vincent's and the fina coming up against bally are probably two standout fixtures that everyone in the country is looking forward to yeah um bally Mon put on a impressive display last week um and i'd say like thomas davis were pretty disappointed in their own performance um but it looked like Ballymun have the have for the first time. I suppose look what's of the last ten years that they've their county lads, you know, and that can after a, a long all earning campaign. So you can see the kind of be, benefit and the freshness in in their in their play. Um, yeah, look definitely the toy toy around. I would say it would be Ballymun Nafina and then um, like Nafina, you know, quality side last year or good their quality side. Would have been very disappointed in how they uh, last year again beaten by Ballyboden. Uh, a few controversial incidents now, uh, you know, but I think uh, they would have been disappointed they got beaten in the group game, but um, I think by or by Jude's. So they they got their house in order again. So look, they they won't look me. It's a huge look. It's it's a it's it's a derby game. It's the neighbours. It'll be a big 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 toy. It's just a pity that they had no more to, nobody can go and watch it, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, look, there's a, f- a lot of good, fascinating battles that's going to go and see. You've got Johnny Cooper and Merchant, you know, uh, with Nafina, and then you've got obviously look the the Smalls, um, Philly, Philly McMahon, James McCarthy. Um, so yeah, look, yeah, huge, huge uh, tussle, you know. Um, so look, look, I'm actually looking forward to seeing that one, um, myself. So yeah, look, we'll see how that goes. Um, then look at Jules uh, Scary Harps. Look, you'd, you'd fancy um, Jules to come out of that one. Scary Harps did a great job of getting out of that group, and uh, and credit to them. Uh, we played them in the challenge match, and you know uh, we look uh, they they looked organised, and you knew that they, if you weren't going to uh, be ready for 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 them to cause problems. That's the beauty. Of, like you know, I suppose you're talking about the Kerry Championship and the Dublin Championship, and uh, God, like you know when you've got Teams that are, are hungry and, and wanting to play football, you know, they throw up your shock, which is which is what which is what you want, obviously, you know. Um, I think Bally Bowden then are playing. Um, it looks like well, Rahini and uh, Duncan's are playing. I think this Wednesday. Um, Sunday again, I think. Yeah. Or yes. Yeah, so, yeah. But so, I think uh, if Rahini wait, beat them, it'll be Rahini Bally Bowden. But I think uh, if. Plunkett's beat them, they had to beat them by 20 something points in order for them to go ahead of Castle Knock. But if the, if um, if they do beat Rahini, then that means Castle Knock go through just on, on score difference, as far as I'm aware, you know. And then look then as ourselves and, and our, our good buddies from, from across the river, yeah, uh, Vincent. So yeah, look, man, Vincent is the pinnacle, you know, Vincent have, have, the, the, have set the bar so high over. Since the seventies, the Vince's team was seventies, you know, uh, with so many uh, Dublin legends. Um, and then look, come here, over the last ten years, they've been the, they've been top Dublin team, uh, club team in Dublin. 
um, uh, you know, with Dermo, uh, Mossy Quinn, and like, uh, the, you know, there's our young Mullins as well. So, like, you know, they've got quality, very, very, very well organised, um, you know, Noel Moyne is back over them with Brian Mullins this year. So, look, they looked impressed for the last day, you know, Bally Bowden, they only bet them by four points, even though they shift to five goals, but they still come back and, you know, it was brought back within four points, you know, they looked impressed for the last day, you know, all, like, you know, they, they, they play very well, like Clontarf didn't play so well, but, look, you could, once, if you've got a team with Darren McConney and Mossy Quinn in it, you need to be on your toes no matter what, so look, uh, we're looking, we're looking forward to it, um, you know, and definitely, definitely, it's definitely one of the toys of the round, you know, um, I wish I wasn't being, I wish I wasn't involved in the sense that, I could go and enjoy watching it instead of being involved, you know. But um, I look definitely going to take it for granted their quality side. Um, we didn't play particularly well the last day, so we've work to do. Um, so yeah, look, it's it's going to be uh, yeah, look, it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, just glad, just glad we're playing football. To be honest with you, after the other day, you know. Exactly, and uh, just looking at the Down Championship, Warren Point, uh, shocking at the bear in the last day, but. I don't think Kilku can be stopped this year now, maybe I'm wrong, Finian, but when you're even looking at Kilku's manager, Mickey Moran, it's absolutely amazing what he's done with all the different clubs he's been involved with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He, he deserves great credit. He's got uh, he's great patience to start with. So I, I, it's, it's hard to think over over the years. You know, he's been involved with Mayo and inter-county setups, but he, you know, he's taken on a lot of clubs. He, he must eat, uh, eat, sleep and breathe uh, football, you know. Uh, he's been in Slough Neil, he's been all over um, Leitrim, uh, he's, 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 he's dabbled in a lot and to be fair to him, he's not afraid of a challenge, uh, but I suppose he saw a huge opportunity up in Kilku, not only in Down, but maybe at national level and we saw that last year, you know, where they, they you know, they were the only real teams in, to take Curve Finn to, um, to, to, to go the distance with Curve Finn, you know, so you know, he, he's he's a man that, you know, I, I don't know the man and I've never met him, but uh, he's obviously very clever. Uh, he's very good at getting players to buy in and getting management setups to buy in. And um, he saw opportunity and he probably sees it again, even though there, as of now, there's no all earning club, but maybe he sees an opportunity if that ever changed that a team like Kilku could 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 come and bother bother teams. But uh, I don't think they'll be caught up up and down. Burn, Mayo Bridge, they've all progressed obviously they're all teams that are, are gone back to underage and they're all trying to get back you know to the days of when they were winning championships uh, both both teams very successful uh in the past 10 or 20 years but uh, i think Kilku uh have, have pulled ahead and uh yeah i don't see them being them see them being caught this year particularly yeah um it'd be interesting now to see and there'd definitely be some shocks but um that's all on our club football championship show for today <laughs>